It's Nicole Sweeney, host of Lights Out with WBGO Studios. So excited to be here with my very special guest who's got a brand new album out. And she'll also be a part of the Schomburg Center's 2023 Women's Jazz Festival. You know, March is Women's History Month. But if you know me by now, I am always supporting women in jazz, women in music, every single day. Now, I'm kind of surprised that it's taken me this long to talk with this amazing artist, but they say it's always about his time. So I'm so happy to be with her today. Liz Wright, how you doing? I can't tell you, I have to tell you, I'm so excited. Like I woke up super early this morning thinking about just talking to you because it's like, I've always seen you and heard you and you've always been with me, but now you're officially with me. How you doing? I'm doing great, Nicole. It's wonderful to be with you. And I apologize again for taking a little long to dilly dally this morning with tech, uh, technology, but it, I'm glad it's brought us together. Oh, yes, absolutely. Well, look, we are here to talk about a brand new album, but I have to go back because first I said 2003, that's 10 years ago, right? That's when, and then I said, no, Nicole, that is 20 years ago. Yeah, your baby, your debut is twenty <laughs> years old. Soon it can have a cocktail. How does that feel? Yeah, it's uh, it's amazing that I have done anything consistently for that long. Um, because I'm an Aquarius and I'm a unicorn, and I have always labeled myself as being all over the place. But I think music is the place where I, you know, it's. It's a language that keeps me whole. I remember being in school, being super tall, having gigantic feet and hands, thanks to my daddy, and just not being able to relate to people. And so this really has been a trusted language, a trusted way to relate uh, and just find my place. So I'm, I'm super grateful. That's, that's wow. what I am. Wow. I mean, the album Salt. I think I know when I say just that word alone, it brings back so many memories. Do you remember? I mean, even just getting to that first album, that's a true, it's like really having your first child. It's like you remember the steps, you remember hearing it for the first time on the radio. Do you remember all of that? Oh my goodness, I really do. Uh, <laughs> Were you in the car somewhere and it just came on? <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, Wow. I just had a weird memory flood through my mind. <laughs> um, I don't remember exactly where I was the first time I heard Salt on the radio. I do remember, however, the very first time I ever heard my voice at all on the radio. I was uh, singing a song with the choir um, and the song came on a gospel station and I was still in school at the time. I think I was in high school or finishing middle school. I crawled underneath the kitchen counter into a ball and just in a fit of giggles. It was a weird. <laughs> it's interesting to hear yourself outside of yourself, right? <laughs> yeah, and, and just the way it sounded in the house, it, it just created this loop of, of life and reality that, um, that, that I don't know, it, it just came, it just, I've always thought of voices that come through speakers as kind of coming down on me and almost having like a, um, some kind of some kind of relationship dynamic where I'm always looking up to the voices that I hear, and so to hear my own coming down on me, I just kind of I was like a spiraling little puppy. I just ran underneath the counter into a ball and just laughing. Wow! But you're <laughs> used to singing. I mean, that was just a part of of your growing up, right? As 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 we as the air we breathe, as natural as that is, that that's what singing is to it's you, true. music, right? It's true. I, I, as I was saying earlier, I've been so um, sensitive and um, just so uh, so warm, like in in that I've just been like so affected by everything and everybody so much. I've always been like that. I've always been the kid, and yet when I sing, I feel like I'm being really clear. Everybody's okay. They understand what I'm saying, and it's it's always created an experience of uh, of belonging and and space and. Um, so I'm just really thankful for this way to relate to people because uh, I, I really don't know what I would do without it. I think uh, I just have a level of sensitivity that would would make uh, functioning quite difficult. I considered it last night even when my team kind of forced me to do a, a little shout out about the show in Durham tonight that I, I said, maybe I should just sing it. I really don't like talking on camera. <laughs> 
Um, but anyway, yeah, it's all, it's, it has been this way to relate to the people and it always has created this feeling of belonging. So even more than feeling like someone important or famous, I have always felt like I belong to the people and this is my offering. You know, when we come together, this is just what I bring to the table where we all bring our offerings and where we all feast, you know, this is what I got. Yeah. Yeah. And what I love and have always loved about you is our voices are, you know, this little lower register that I don't feel like we really get to hear uh, as often as I'd like to. It's so sensual. And and you mentioned warm. It it really feels like a, a hug. Your voice has always been just that. Was it like that as a baby? Because I have to tell you, my, my family always shares stories with me that I was a baby in the store and I would ask for things and people would be like, who said that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's actually really funny. I, I have, my mom has a similar uh, memory she shares with me. She says, uh, one time I just started crying about something that I wanted and um, in the store and my voice was low and I just sound like this little, somewhere between like a cow and a bee, just, uh, you know, but I had like pigtails and, you know, it was just the whole little plaits and everything. And, um, I, she said, she said one time this lady turned around to her and said, oh, wow, what an interesting voice. She's probably going to be, you know, in broadcasting or something. What a, what a wonderful, interesting voice your child has. But I could imagine this little girl, you know, with, with plaits and carrying on just in the store like, uh, uh. <laughs> it's funny because people always ask me, do I sing? And I'm like, nope, uh -huh. broadcasting. I, I miss the singing <laughs> bug. But, you know, it's the calling. And yeah. like you, you just can't help but to, you know, let it be a part of your life, which is why mm -hmm. we're even talking today, 20 years later from Salt, you have a brand new album. So much has happened in 20 years, right? Life. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes. The irony of my first record being named Salt is really hitting me right now because, mm -hmm. you know, when I'm not on stage and I'm not recording, um, I am actively, you know, a chef, I'm a cook in Chicago and I have a tiny little cafe inside of a school. Um, and so I see my neighbors and I, and I'm cooking. And so it's just really interesting. Um, and then I leave to go on tour and I leave a really, really beautiful um, team there, uh, really talented to, to take care of the community. And I love this dynamic now because, you know, I grew up always being in touch with my neighbors, always mm. knowing who they are. By well, you're name. from Georgia. Mm hmm. So I finally have it all back. You know, dad used to grow food in the backyard and bring his extra goods to church and give them away out of the back of the truck. And I remember the missionaries with their broad hats. They always thought that the things that were yellow, you know, like melons and different things that uh, that he they weren't ripe. Dad's like, no, no, no. I got lots of varieties. Like, look, those are red ones here. And this is this here. And this is yellow meat, this. And I mean, he would just like give people a little tour of what he could fit in the back of the truck. So all of that, all of that, um, you know, and then looking back at the, at the name salt, it just carries so much meaning and, and, uh, history for me with my family. And, uh, I just, I love it. I, I get a lot from serving people and really knowing them. So it's, uh, it's always gotta be from a grounded place for me to keep going. Wow. I can relate to that one uh, when I, I used to live in Atlanta and did oh, radio nice. out there. And it was always being from New York. It was always interesting how we would say, who's who's why they say good morning to me? I, I don't know them because but people from Georgia, they are neighborly. Right. Mm -hmm. They say good morning. Hello. How are you, sir? Ma'am. I had to get over that. Ma'am is actually a great thing. It doesn't mean anything with age. We'd be like, I'm not old and I'm not old enough to be called ma'am. But Georgia really is such that that city or that's that state, if you would. And then even, you know, certain cities are just extra yeah. neighborly, which is so, so cool that you are feeding people now from. How did you get from Georgia to Chicago? Because that's another great city. It is a great city. You know, there's a lot of, uh, as you know, a lot of Southern, uh, you know, migrants and children of, 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 of migrants uh, in Chicago. So you have the children of farmers, you know, first, second and third generations, just mm -hmm. like, you know, living this life, but having it inside of them, this piece of uh, a relationship with the land, you know, mm -hmm. and so inside of this urban experience, I'm able to keep myself sane by just really knowing who's around me and where they're from and, preparing foods with the kind of time and care that like make people feel at home. Mm 
and recall something, you know, that the city can invite you to forget, you know, it's a, it's beautiful. And I love Chicago, especially because um, I have seen uh, more uh, activity and engagement and agency um, in a more diverse span of people in uh, education, business, politics. Uh, it's not easy, um, but some things are more durable, doable there. And I have seen people uh, put their hands uh, on their visions in ways that I've not seen anywhere else. So it's a pretty interesting and beautiful place to be serving folks. And now it's a funny thing because they'll come in and some folks are like, you know, you look just like that girl that sang some songs and uh, what's that child's name? Uh. <laughs> it is the funniest thing. But I've always wondered, can I, can I love, can I speak, can I minister? with my mouth closed? Like, do I have more than one way to get this out? And is it such a thing that it can, it can translate before I make a sound and before I'm known? And I just wanted to make sure that, you know, a personality or a reputation hadn't gotten in front of just the mm. spirit of whatever I'm supposed to be doing. And so it's just nice to recall um, growing up and growing food and now serving people and, uh, wow. There's so much inspiration. Like I'm, I'm not about to run out of music. I just recorded another 12 songs for the next studio record wow. two weeks ago. So it's, I feel like this is my cycle. This wow. is a return to home for me to have both. You know. Well, food and music, they are very, very similar. Mm -hmm. I'm someone who loves. I'm in the kitchen about five days out of seven, and I'm I'm cutting nice. onions, garlic, shallots, celery. I mean, I'm very particular about food, but it is about putting love into. And sometimes, yeah. the simplest of dishes and ingredients make the best food, right? And Absolutely. and that's what music is about. So there's oh, yeah. there's there's definitely that connection. And I understand you. I mean, not only are you in Chicago, aren't you in the South Side of Chicago? I am. am I? Come on now. I am on the South Side. <laughs> when I got to say that. Out there, I was terrified. I was like, I've heard such things. Right. Oh, you know. But when I got there, I just fell in love with uh, the children and people. And uh, again, the sense of like agency. I mean, these are the, the children of farmers and of people who came up north. And you can feel that hustle. You can feel that drive and sense of vision. And just the way people network and try to get through things together is quite unique in Chicago. And so I'm happy to feed them, you know. Nice. They, they, they need you. I'm, I'm delightful that, I, you know, I'm delighted that I'm needed. And I just, uh, I'm thankful for the folks that I serve who have no idea who I am. So now, like, I serve people who drive trucks who are on the local news station who are you know they, and they don't they don't care who i am and it makes me happy uh that i get to be a part of their their days you know it's really fun wow and that helped a lot throughout that time where the world music just came to a halt didn't yeah. it you you were still able to connect with people in some way and mm -hmm. from what i understand did that help to inspire this brand new album it did That's actually funny. It did actually. I, uh, you know, I I went through a few things. I remember when the lockdown started. Um, now I guess it's exactly a couple of years ago because um, it was in March, and I I remember, <clears throat> you know, closing things down. But also, I, I we were in the middle of a grant to um, uh, remodel a new space on the same side of the um, on the other side of the same building. So. Obviously, you have to keep working to keep, you know, drawing the grant. So we were in our pajamas with drills out, hammers, like, you know, drawing and changing the plan. And the lockdown, you know, uh, provided a lot of information. That was during the time where we, uh, everybody was like wiping off groceries. And like, it was the, yeah. the, the most paranoid kind of peak of that. Yeah. And I was like, you know what? Grocery shopping and getting things you need to eat, like really has got, become very stressful. So why don't I like why don't we change the model of this cafe and like put a teeny little mini market in the front where people can get like artisan foods, local foods. Um, they can get like a, you know, a half dozen of farm eggs and, and it's not a big deal. And I can even manage how many folks are in here at a time. I just, it, it made me really want to bring uh, security and pleasure back into our daily routines. So this has got so uh, everything got to be such a production and such a concern. So it's fun and I'm, I'm, I'm super grateful. And I also, you know, speaking of music during that time, 
it was quiet and we were sort of waiting by the phone. And I did have the experience of realizing that I have to sing for my well-being and mm-hmm. I have been doing it. But because my eyes were so focused on the people, it's always been something I've projected and just given away, given away. And at a, at a certain point, I was going nuts because I wasn't singing and it wasn't because I needed to, you know, be entertaining or to be, um, you know, celebrated in that way. Uh, I, I just needed to to release sound. And mm. I did have this life changing experience of going into my little prayer room and like um, singing before I went out to work. And I I just I, I sang with the intention and focus that I usually do when there's people around and um I just started weeping. I was mm-hmm. lost. I was like, oh my goodness, I could feel, I still get emotional when I think about it. I could still, mm-hmm. I could feel like the air change. I could feel my ancestors. I just felt such kindness and warmth around me. And I just was like, oh, right, right. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> this is what's been happening. Okay, cool. Yeah. So I do know it doesn't belong to me, but I do mm-hmm. know that I've been just blessed with some ability to call this call this you know i don't understand it i don't i don't really know you know exactly it's hard to put into words it is but i'm just humbled by the fact that it is right yeah so it was it was nice to be like stuck in a situation where i was kind of eclipsed by my own medicine Mm. and i needed to receive it i had to receive it there was nowhere else to put it but back in me and i just i'm thankful for it and it really inspires this new studio album, uh, which I just decided to call Eclipse. <laughs> mm. And so I'm, I'm excited to be, you know, testing some of the songs in my live performance along with things that have been in my catalog and things that I've just never recorded, but that I always sing. So right now it's uh, it's really cool. The relationship with the audience is fun because I, I really, I have learned to uh, bring songs to them before they go to tape, just to make sure that they're alive in a room. Because if that's happening, they're probably worth recording, you know? Yeah. It's like hearing a, it's like testing out a song in the car. Yeah. For some people, I got to hear it in the car first. I got to uh-huh. turn on the engine and it's, it's got to be a whole thing before. I, okay. Oh yeah. oh yeah. It's just different experiences to music. It's so personal. Uh-huh. And I think, you know, the pandemic, there was some as horrible as it was, you know, I'm one of those people where going to get groceries. My daughter was maybe two at the time. It was so mm. hard. I had to plan oh, wow. just to pick up food. It was the it was the craziest yeah. of times, but it also led to some some good things. And I, I feel like music really music came out on top. Uh, yeah. Because I think the best kind of music, especially jazz and, and blues, right? And gospel, like some the darkest of times, we were able to pull the light out from yeah. that. And that's what we're getting uh, from this new album. And I understand you own your own. Is this the owning of your own masters for the first time? Which is a big deal yeah. when, when it comes to musicians, isn't it? Yes. I, 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 I jokingly say to my closest friends, like, we were talking about being woke. Now we're talking about ownership. Right? Yeah. <laughs> but it's true. <laughs> it's so true. And what's beautiful about ownership is that you know everybody in this business who's really doing it for love whether they're an engineer musician um you know uh, uh, even a manager if they really know um the power that we hold as a as a community to make things right they participate you know and i and it's been so it's been a joy to to tell people hey this is my first budget let, I, tell me how to do right by you, but I do want you to know that. And like how they respond is amazing. And I think people understand, I think everyone generally understands that it, it's justice is not always uh, something that comes with a great deal of rhetoric and campaigning and, and um, just, just finding an, uh, an enemy and just really zoning in. It's just like, sometimes it comes when we, work as a collective and we are in a spirit of collaboration and we create justice as a, as a beautiful opportunity. And it just turns the wheel of like, who's driving, what's on top, you know, and, and it, it can be very gentle in its most powerful reality, you know, justice. And I just am so grateful for uh, everybody I'm working with. I'm having so much fun. Nice. I drove across town in my own truck to go record, which I've never done before, because one of my favorite engineers just moved to Chicago. And I'm just like, um, 
just overwhelmed at the grace of it. I feel very tiptoey and like surprised at how how easy it is to do certain things with a certain amount of research and uh, and just joyful courage. Um, yeah. There's so much of what you need is between those things, you know. Yeah. Now, will you be uh, showcasing some of this new music on uh, Monday? I can't believe March 20th is just around the yeah. corner, but the Schomburg yeah. is having a, a women's jazz festival celebrating amazing women. I love that they're doing that. But how do you feel about showcasing this? As you said, you usually like to uh, let the audience get a sneak peek first. So mm -hmm. how do you feel about, about oh, Monday and, and sharing I it with it. the people? I'm excited. I mean... I'm surprised that I'm selling tickets on a Monday in New York. I love New York. I, I will always be, <laughs> always, I will always be a secret New Yorker by and by. I haven't even changed my phone number. It's awful. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm excited. Uh, you know, the music really, of course, I'm the artist and my name is on everything. But, you know, this is the sound of a relationship with the people. This is the sound of a relationship with life and um with time and and everybody knows that so I'm, I'm really happy to be more open about even the value and the power of the audience you know in this dialogue so i'm i love it and i'm thankful i have to say especially to craig street uh he produced a couple of my records in the past and he made me aware of this opportunity to just bring the songs in front of the people and see what life they have in a room without the perfect and he took me to like kind of juke joiny spots in new york yes. to do that which was really, really a great test. It's like, if you have less instruments, less people, mm. less production, you know, and the song still lives and speaks, then you you need to carry that with you, you know? That's so right. I'm, I'm stoked. I love the Schomburg. I've been there a couple of times with Toshi and, and her mother, Dr. Regan. And um, so I just have a beautiful relationship with the space itself. Um, so I'm really glad to be there. And on a Monday night, you guys have a lot of faith in me. <laughs> well, look. New Yorkers don't let anything ending in day stop them from getting out to enjoy life, right? It's so true. And this I love. I will so love it forever. Yeah. This this is right on time. So Monday, the Schomburg. Look, if I can get a babysitter, I'll be there. But either way, <laughs> this was right on time and such a blessing and an honor to finally be able to speak with you. 20 years later from that debut album that I love so much, I, I really have to think that this is his plan and this was right on time once again. So thank you for spending some time you, with, with me, Liz. Liz Wright on WBGO Studios. She'll be at the Schomburg Monday, March 20th, and brand new music coming out. Tell me the name of the album. Eclipse. E Eclipse is a working title. Yep. E Eclipse. Liz Wright.